Like they once said about Lord of Voldemort in Harry Potter. He's back. I'm back, and I bring an important message. Hello everyone, and welcome to IMRT Reviews. IMRT, and today we are recording a video. We are back. I'm back, so you know, let's put the hat on. I'm back, and we need the the iconic hat. No, it's not really iconic, but I wear it a lot because I like covering up my bed hair. But I'm back. I have no excuses for my like month and a half absence. I've just been playing a lot of Football Manager, and I've been very lazy. So I apologise. Um, we're still awaiting some new lighting as well. Um, in my channel update video, I was like, "The red's going," and the movie man, great YouTuber, check him out, was like, "Gasp, sacrilege!" And basically, I lied. It's, the red's still here, but. We will be updating soon. But yes, I am back. I am sorry for my absence. Doctor Strange 2 is on the horizon. And before we, you know, get hyped for that. And I'll review that next week. Well, Thursday. We're going to talk about a message I have for you. A message for everyone. For all movie fans. And that message is why you should watch. Well, pay to see The Northman. <sighs> Now, this isn't going to be a review of The Northman. This is going to be why you should watch it. Now, my thoughts on The Northman, let's just summarise them very quickly. It's one of it's, it's my favourite film of the year so far. It's one of my favourite films I've ever seen. I loved it so much. It blew me away. And Ethan Hawke, in his role in this film... Whew, Get that man an Oscar. He stole the show. Well, I've been thinking about his performance every day since I've watched it like two weeks ago. And if you don't believe me, Patrick Bateman, is The Northman a good movie? Yes, it is. But have you heard of Huey Lewis on the news? You heard it here, folks. Patrick Bateman said The Northman is a good movie. And Patrick, we don't have time for Huey Lewis on the news, okay? We've got some serious things to talk about. Now, let's actually get into this video. I've, this is like the longest intro ever. <laughs> the Northman is a very rare type of movie in today's movie world. It's a film that's made on a budget between 60 and 90 million, which is a large budget that, you know, needs a big return. It's not as big a budget as, say, for a movie like Fantastic Beasts and uh, The Secrets of Dumbledore, which was budget at 200 million. Um, so, you know, it has... A moderate budget but it's still on the larger side so you need a big return you're looking at probably like four three hundred to four hundred million to be considered a success because you know you've got to take into marketing into account everything like that so you, it needs to be you know 300 to 400 million to be considered a success and the studio took a huge risk on it because you know it's not a well-known ip like doctor strange Fantastic Beast or something like that. This is a wholly original movie made by an extremely unique director in Robert Eggers, who has a very different, uh, you know, vision to anything we've seen, you know, today. He's very unique in how he makes films and how it looks on the screen. They're wonderful, but they're not for everyone, so it is a big risk. Now we've been seeing this trend recently, where you know, moderately big budget movies, you know, say sixteen to ninety million, that are original not doing very well at the box, at the box office. People aren't going out to see them. The most notable example that's been very recent being The Last Duel, which was a magnificent movie, masterfully crafted by Ridley Scott, and no one went to see it. Now, that's really upsetting because so many people say, oh, I really want a new original movie. I'm so done with all these big blockbusters, Star Wars, Marvel, this and that movies. I want to see something original. And then something original gets released and nobody goes and sees it. And I don't know why. Is it the streaming world? Is it just too easy to just sit at home and wait for these films to, you know, be streamed to us? I don't know. Because the only way we're going to get these films is if we go out and pay to see them, give them a box office return because that's how the studios work. We give them the money and they make the movies. And movie studios do listen when we go out to see a movie and pay for it and see it on the big screen. I mean, Dune is a great example for that. They didn't green light a sequel until they saw how good, well, the first one would do. And it did well in a very difficult time with COVID. 
and they greenlit a second one. And one, that's amazing to me. I, I generally didn't think we'd get a second one. I was very scared. And now I know I'm going to get a second part to that incredible first part. And that makes me really happy. And we're getting a unique sci-fi movie because of this. We went out, we paid to see this movie, and now we get something for it. We get to see another one. We get to see more unique sci-fi, and that makes me happy. So the proof is there. The studios will listen if we go out and pay to see these movies. And now just think of a world where Dune 2 wasn't greenlit. Now that, that's not what I want to live in. That would be very upsetting, because I just have this, this perfect part one. And I'd never be able to finish it. Ah, <sighs> it's okay. We are get, we're getting number two, and it's directed by Denis Villeneuve. The man. The man's incredible. But even he has struggled at the box office. Blade Runner 2049, incredible movie. Not very many people went to see it. Are we going to get another big artsy movie like that? You know, sci-fi film on a big budget? It's going to be hard to get greenlit, because no one went to see it. And that really does upset me. And there's only certain types of directors that can get these films made, such as Ridley Scott. And you've got the, the Michael Bays of the world that can still get 80s action movies greenlit, like Ambulance, you know? There's only certain types of directors that can get these films greenlit. So new directors face an impossible challenge. You know, when Guillermo del Toro is struggling to get his movies made with his amazing ideas, think about how difficult it would be for Robert Eggers. Or an Ari Aster, you know, these new young directors that are trying to, you know, make a name for themselves. How are they going to get their ideas made? I mean, Guillermo del Toro can't do it, and he's killed Guillermo del Toro, you know. That's why he's gone to Netflix, because they're greenlighting some cool stuff over there. I do feel for new filmmakers, because it is an impossible challenge to get these new original things greenlit. And you see a lot of these new directors writing with the budget in their mind. You see a lot of horror movies filmed in one location because they know they can't afford to film it elsewhere, create sets and everything like that. And I feel like that also limits creativity. It can it can heighten it. You already gotta, you know, make sure that these people can't leave this house and write ways as to why they can't, stuff like that. But it also does limit it when you have those restrictions. Studios want low risk, high reward. Horror movie, three million dollars. It makes thirty million on its opening weekend. It makes a hundred million total. Low risk, high reward. The Northman, sixty to ninety million budget. It's gonna make three hundred to four hundred million. That's not that you know hundred million that it has to make like a horror movie. That is a high risk. Probably you know, it's not even a big reward. It's not gonna make a billion at the box office. It's not gonna make eight hundred. Probably not gonna make five hundred million. It might it might not even make three hundred million. I'm making this video because I saw. The box office numbers in the US and worldwide for the Northman and I was worried because the more films like this fail the less we get these incredible types of movies and we just don't see very often so to summarize my thoughts for this video I am worried when I see films like the Northman making 20 million dollars worldwide on its opening weekend that scares me I want films like The Northman, I want films like The Last Duel, Blade Runner 2049, more often. They're unique, they're an incredible experience at the cinema, something that we just don't get very often when you see a unique vision on the big screen. So, I ask of you one thing, please go and see The Northman this weekend, this week, whenever, and if you can't see it, when it comes out, buy it on Blu-ray, buy it on DVD, just support these films in whatever way you can so we can continue to get them. That is all folks. I am back, I will be reviewing Doctor Strange next week, so if you're excited for that, let me know. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on this you know, message, this plea for the Northman and original movie making. I will be interested to hear all your thoughts down in the comments below, and yeah. Please give it a like, please subscribe, and as always, I'll see you next time.